This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us to start your Sunday. I'm Brittany Falkers. Topping headlines this morning, a popular Portland hangout for left-wing activists is shutting its doors. We talked to the owner of Cider Riot about his de decision to close. Plus, police are trying to find out who put up a noose inside a research building at OHSU. Well, let's start things off with a check on your Sunday forecast with Vanessa Paz. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Brittany. Happy uh, Sunday, everyone. I had to think about what day it was. Uh, yesterday, yeah, we got that taste of a little bit of rain in the Portland metro area. The good news, though, that system that brought us that rain has swept on through, and now we're just kind of left with morning fog, some drizzle in uh, some areas uh, that we're seeing, but by the end of the or the end of the morning towards the afternoon, that should all taper off, giving way for partly sunny skies. As we take a look uh, at some of the vis visibility around town right now, I do want to let folks know that if they're headed out the door, just make sure to keep in mind that there are uh, some visibility issues because of the dense fog. So just give yourself some extra time because, of course, you're going to want to use caution out there. We got a mile of visibility uh, in the Portland area, half mile out in Hillsboro. So you can just imagine uh, kind of, you know, the treacherous uh, driving conditions that could be out there because of that. Right now we are looking at 51 degrees with some calm winds as far as highs go for, for the next two days. For those of you who do have a holiday weekend, uh, 61 degrees for today is what we're going to top out at 60 degrees tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies, but going to be pretty breezy. I'll get more into that later on in my full forecast coming up. Brittany. All right, thanks, Vanessa. And new this morning, detectives say a man got shot while driving his car in the St. John's neighborhood. The victim suffered only minor injuries. He told police he was driving near the intersection of North Columbia Way and Macram, Macram last night, and someone tried to flag him down. Now, he did not stop, but he says that's when someone shot at his car. He says he was treated and released from the hospital. Detectives say they found bullet damage to his car as well as a nearby church and home. So far, there have been no arrests. A popular left wing hangout in Northeast Portland is closing its doors this weekend. Cider Riot will shut down tonight after six years in business. You may remember the cidery made headlines last May Day as the site of this brawl between left and right groups. Thursday, a judge ruled that a million dollar lawsuit filed by the owner against Patriot Prayer leader Joey Gibson can move forward. But the owner says this has nothing to do with why they're shutting down. KGW's Art Edwards went to their closing party last night. The run of Northeast Portland's cider riot is about to come to an end. Yeah, that'll be it, though. Abram Goldman Armstrong says the operation can't go on. We are joining the class of 2019 of uh, breweries that uh, are shutting down, unfortunately. Since the first of the year, the list has been growing and includes Widmer Brothers, Portland Brewing, and Lompoc Brewing. Goldman Armstrong says the closure has nothing to do with his lawsuit against Patriot Prayer leader Joey Gibson. Yeah, this is uh, a simple economic uh, problem. When we built our facility back in 2016, uh, we thought we'd be doing uh, basically two to 3,000 barrels a year, and we're kind of stuck at about 1,000 barrels a year, and, and that's just not enough to pay the bills here. Goldman Armstrong started brewing in his garage in 2013, expanded, and moved to the Northeast Portland location in 2016. The tragic part for Portland craft breweries. Is Sam Holloway is an associate management professor at the University of Portland. He's an expert on breweries and often advises them. He says it's tough to see so many local breweries shutting down. When I coach breweries on how to think differently about their business, I say use being small as an asset for your business. Don't try to play the big brewery game. While Cider Riot might be closing, Goldman Armstrong doesn't have regrets. He wanted to open a business like this. I got to live that dream and so I'm I'm really lucky to have accomplished that, uh, won medals all across the, the, the world for, for our ciders, and I couldn't have asked for a, a better thing. Cider Riot will close for the last time at 9 o'clock tonight. Goldman Armstrong says he's still looking for investors to somehow maybe keep his dream alive. Police are investigating after a noose was found in a research building on OHSU's campus. The school says employees saw it looped over a construction cone in a secure area on Thursday morning. Campus officers looked at security video, but none of the cameras were able to see the specific area where the noose was found. They're now looking at badge reader data to try to figure out who went into the area at that time. 
In a statement, OHSU leaders call the news abhorrent and say they don't tolerate harassment or intimidation of any kind. They also warned of harsh consequences for doing something like this. Well, a Bend woman and her friends say they were drugged after visiting a downtown bar. The friends say they only had two drinks, but no memory of the night. They did recall two men trying to talk to them, and at one point, did, one point did their drinks shifted into different positions. And I just, I can't imagine like waking up in a really bad situation, so I would hate for that to happen to somebody else downtown. We were just, I mean, we weren't partying or being crazy. We were just kind of have, trying to have a couple drinks, just me and my friend, and then this happened. Like, we could have died. I could have been arrested. Police say anyone who thinks they've been drugged like this should go to the hospital immediately to get blood tested. That way they can figure out what was the substance. Police say they're working to get surveillance video from the bar and ID the two men. A local church is determined to give homeless people a safe place to sleep, even if it leaves county leaders confused and neighbors angry. In fact, check out this sign on display at the First Congregational United Church of Christ in Corvallis. It says, how can we worship a homeless man on Sunday and ignore him on Monday? Reverend Jen Butler says that sums up her congregation's reaction when nearly two dozen homeless people showed up in the woods on the west end of their property. They had been swept from a private wooded property next door. The church decided to let them stay and dubbed it safe camp. But from the moment those folks showed up, the congregation just said, well, absolutely. When Jesus shows up on your front door, you take care of Jesus. So it was clear to them right from the beginning. But in the few months since Safe Camp formed, complications have come into play. The church sits on both city and county property, so county leaders have no idea how to handle this zoning wise, and neighbors of the church are angry. In fact, one is threatening to sue. We're going to break it all down tonight on KGW News at 11, but in the meantime, you can check out the full story online. It's posted now at KGW.com. A piece of maritime history is now sitting in a port of Garibaldi parking lot. A fishing boat built in 1915 is set to be scrapped after it sank in the harbor, but officials say this case is just an example of a bigger problem. In a marina filled with fishing vessels, big and small, there's something in the distance that's not where it belongs. Probably a nice old boat this day. This 70-foot boat named AMAC was pulled ashore last month after sinking in the harbor. Now people passing by can't help but stop for a photo. I was just driving by and I saw the boat up in the, up in the hard here and uh, thought I'd take a couple of pictures. It's seen its better days. Built in 1915, the AMAC likely has a sea of stories to tell. Each one of them has its own story. And unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't go too well for this one. Charles Ells bought the ship in 1938, converting it into a fishing boat before hydraulics were used to pull in nets. It sailed the Oregon coast until 2015 and was sold two years later. And there it sat in the port of Garibaldi, that is, until October 13th. We believe it was a catastrophic failure. We had, uh, had it on video and it, it went down in about five minutes from when it first started to shudder. Port General Manager Mike Satan says, with help from the Coast Guard, they were able to respond quickly, containing gas and oil before it caused more damage to the water. Now it's set to be scrapped, but Satan says this is part of a bigger problem. We have a lot of derelict boats that uh, the owners will either walk away from or some other circumstances. That leaves local governments to clean it up and front the bill. In the case of AMAC, it was in the process of being sold when it sank. The seller passed away. The buyer, who's responsible, can't be found. So unfortunately, the, you know, the response and the disposal and everything falls at the port um, or the local government entity. And you wind up having to uh, you know, financially front it all before we can get restitution from the, the owners. So it, it's, a, it's a huge problem. For now, taxpayers are paying for cleanup, hauling and scrapping the ship. Satan estimates a job like this could cost more than $200,000. Again, this boat really had some really neat potential. I, I, this, this could have been in a museum or something like that. But I, I think the really frustrating thing for us is that we get a lot of folks that, that will walk away from boats and just put their hands up and say, well, this isn't my problem anymore. 
Officials are still waiting on permits to have the ship removed and don't know exactly when it'll be scrapped and taken away. So if you want to get a look for yourself, you're going to need to check it out sooner than later.